Hi there, Bill Hitchcock. I'm back. Oh, I was in Florida. 60 degrees at the lowest, 85 degrees at the warmest every day. And now I come back to uh, fly into Raleigh Durham Airport and it's rain, sleet, snow and everything. Oh boy. Anyway, so we're doubling up on some programs to get out to you. What I want to talk to you today is I want to talk to you about the upcoming Marine Fisheries quarterly meeting that's going to be in uh, Kitty Hawk at the Hilton uh, Garden Inn in Kitty Hawk. It'll be February 19th through 21. I'm very excited about it. I'm not going to go over everything they're going to go over. I am going to talk about the public comment, flounder, and uh, speckled trout. You will be able to watch this live on YouTube at the Marine Fisheries Commission's uh, YouTube channel. We'll get you more information about that as it, as it comes out. My primary thing that I want to talk to you right now are the uh, public comment sessions, which will be 6 p.m. on Wednesday evening and February, uh, February 19th and 9 a.m. on Thursday, February 20th. If you're there in Kitty Hawk, go. If you can go to Kitty Hawk, the best, by the way, if you can ever show up in person to anything, do it. That's always the best thing, but we can't always do that. Uh, I did want to make mention that prior to the meeting on Wednesday at 4 p.m., February 19th, NOAA Fisheries will give a presentation on the Marine Recreational Information Program, or MRIP as it's referred to. People always want to know where do they get those numbers off of those surveys? How do they know how many fish were caught, how many fishermen, blah, blah, blah. Here it is. Here's your chance to go witness, listen, to hear what they have to say. You can submit questions. Please submit them to this web form. Again, go to the Marine Fisheries Commission uh, website. So here's your chance. If you got a question, go straight to the source. Don't ask me. Don't ask the CCA. Don't ask the NCFA. Don't ask your next door neighbor or your fishing club. <laughs> go to these guys. They'll be there. Uh, and that's a big thing for me. We'll get into that a little bit later on. It's public comment. Your involvement. Your involvement. I want you involved as much as possible in the fisheries. Tell them what you've experienced, what you know, what you think, what you feel. All right, let's move forward. On February 20th, they're going to talk about the Southern Flounder. Listen to this. So the 2024 Southern Flounder Preliminary Landings Update, Southern Flounder Fishery Management Plan Amendment 4, Presentation of Draft Amendment 4, and Vote on Approval of Draft Amendment 4 for Public and, and Advisory Committee Review. Now, that's all I'm going to make mention about uh, Southern Flounder. Why? We just did an entire show that's had like 10,000 views already in a couple of days about this. So I'll put that link in the comments section so you want to see, go into detail. Again, I can't stress the Marine Fisheries Commission, uh, the Division of Marine Fisheries wants it to get the uh, allotment 50-50 in 2025, not 2026, 2025. Watch the program. You'll find out all about it. Now, let's skip into the uh, trout. This is Spotted Sea Trout Fishery Management Plan Amendment 1. This is on the same day. Decision document. Vote on final adoption of Amendment 1. That's coming up at this meeting. This is what they say in advance. They say to meet statutory requirements to achieve a self-sustaining spotted sea trout stock. Let's stop right there. Ah, Self-sustaining while maintaining recreational and commercial fishing and the development that's going on in all up and down the coast of North Carolina. Self-sustaining. Hmm. Harvest is addressed in Amendment 1. Quantifiable and non-quantifiable management measures are discussed for both the recreational and commercial fisheries. Non-quantifiable, that, that really bothers me. You can't quantify it? How do you measure it? Non-quantifiable management measures for both fisheries in response to a cold stun, as well as information about the small mesh gillnet fishery for spotted sea trout are also discussed. Specific management measures adopted by the North Carolina Marine Fisheries Commission at its November 2024 business meeting are as follows. This is what going to be the law of the land. Sustainable harvest. Implement a recreational 14 to 20 inch slot limit with an allowance for one fish over 26 inches. Implement a recreational three fish bag limit. Implement a commercial 14 to 22 inch slot limit. That ain't for commercial fishermen. That's when commercial fishermen are recreational fishing. More about that. Implement a commercial Saturday through Sunday spotted sea trout harvest closure from January to September and a Saturday through Monday closure from October to December. Formalize the commercial stop net fishery management in the fishery management plan. 
adopt the adaptive management framework with the caveat that adaptive man management measures for sustainable harvest must be brought to the commission for a review prior to implementation. Now, <laughs> some juicy stuff. The adopted sustainable harvest management strategy is estimated to result in approximately 27% harvest reduction in the recreational fishery, a 38% harvest reduction in the commercial fishery, and a 28% overall harvest reduction. Supplement management, eliminate the captain and crew allowance for spotted sea trout on four higher trips with no broader vessel limit. Uh, basically what that means is that you can be on a charter boat, you got your charter captain, you got your mate, and say four other people. Your speckled trout fishing, what they were doing was uh, doing the limit for all six, and now they're just saying no, just the fisherman. You can't count the charter boat captain and his mate. Cold stun management, extend the harvest closure by 15 days to June 30th. Told you at the beginning, and I told you during the Wildlife Resources Commission uh, presentation, that they're talking about moving the uh, closure date of speckled trout due to this cold stun event from the 5th, June 15th to June 30th. So we're talking about going into July before you can fish for speckled trout. Uh, other points is it's unlawful to see. Yep, adopt the cold stun adaptive management framework detailed in the plan. Additionally, the following management measures from the original FMP are carried forward to amendment one. It is unlawful to set gill nets in joint fishing waters from 12.01 a.m. on Saturday to 12.01 a.m. Monday, except in Albemarle Currituck sounds. It's unlawful for a commercial fishing operation to possess more than the recreational bag limit of spotted sea trout per person per day taken by hook and line. So if they're out there recreational fishing, they got to be abide by the recreational fishing laws, which, by the way, brings up another interesting point. There's been uh, folks that have talked in the past about banning gill nets for uh, trout and just let them hook and line. Well, if they just hook and line, they'd be restricted to the recreational limits that you and I are restricted to. Commercial trip limit, 75 fish, excluding the stop net fishery and spotted sea trout. Now. I get, I'm on the emailer for the Coastal Conservation Association. I get their emails whenever they send them out. I'm also on the email for the North Carolina Fisheries Association, the Commercial Fishing Trade Group. This is what they had to say about the, uh, the speckled, uh, by the way, I like the CCA uh, email about this upcoming mean, meeting because it was your basic who, what, where, when, why, and how. That's a press release, so you know what's going on. Just the facts, ma'am, Sergeant Joe Friday. The NCFA put in their personal opinion, which gives context, which I also like. It says the NCFA opposed throughout the process any management given the uncertainty and obvious abundance of speckled trout. They go on to say, now we also question the proposed slot limit, which will create waste in a commercial fishery that produce very few discards. We also view the greater reduction being placed on the commercial sector as unnecessary. Well, okay. Now there is a public comment period here. Let me see if I can pull that up. I'm real bad about doing this kind of thing. Let me see if I can pull up. If you are going to go to the um, meeting or submit comments, I have suggestions that I hope you will do if you want your voice heard. The first off, the goal really is for you to effectively communicate what you are thinking, what you have experienced. It's effective communications. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've seen people just angry and they lose it. Also, be clear, concise, and to the point. I highly suggest if you don't write out uh, what you want to say, at least have bullet points and at least practice because you're given three minutes. That seems like a long time, but once you're sitting there in front of the commission, that three minutes goes fast. And so you'd be, I've seen a lot of people who don't get out what they want to get out. They don't say it because they didn't have things planned and the time went by on them. Uh, contrary and opposing viewpoints are great. I encourage them. I do. But don't be adversarial. They, one of the reasons why they have public comment is the Marine Fisheries Commission and the Division of Marine Fisheries and the Wildlife Resources Commission can't be everywhere every, all, all the time. There's a lot more of us than them. So if you see something and you know it's different from what they're saying, tell them. 
but don't be pissy about it because the brain just shuts off when that, that happens. Believe me, they get a, a lot of it. And if you make a claim, cite supporting materials. Don't go up there making up numbers or remembering something from 10 years ago. I gave an example, and I'm going to get more and more hate mail about this. I gave an example in the uh, Wildlife Resources Commission uh, program of uh, recently in, in a Marine Fisheries Commission meeting, I heard someone say that they're, for every pound of shrimp caught, this four and a half pound of bycatch. No. No. And here's why I say no. The person who came up with that number was Dr. Lewis Daniel with the Division of Marine Fisheries when he was the director. I have the transcript of a meeting of approximately 20 years ago where he apologized for that number, where he said it was wrong, he was pressured into it, and he told the division not to use it. But 20 years later, people are still using it when it's invalid and inaccurate and wrong. And we give wrong information to the uh, commission, they're going to invalidate you. Invalid information that you're stating as fact, they're going to invalidate you and your cause and your purpose. My goal is to have your goal achieved. And you can only do that through facts. You can only do that through truth. The ultimate goal is just truth. Whether it benefits you and I or not, let's go for the truth. And lastly, my uh, last thing I'd like to suggest is um, anecdotal information. What did you experience? What did you see? Tell them. Again, they can't be everywhere all the time, so they're dependent upon us. They're dependent upon us to tell them. And if you got a cell phone, you got a camera, take a picture of it while you are there. Please do that. Don't pass along secondhand information, thirdhand information. Get the facts. If you're going to use facts, cite it. And if it's something that you've seen and you're there and saw, tell them about it. And if you can, take a picture of it. So please, I want you to, I'm going to have to do this again, boys and girls. I am so sorry about this. I'm still trying to figure out how to use this newfangled uh, technology. Marine Fisheries Commission meeting 19th through the 21st is on the, uh, it's going to be in Kitty Hawk. They have public comment se sessions at 6 p.m. Wednesday, the 19th, and 9 a.m. Thursday, February 20th. You can go online. You can submit your questions, comments, and concerns. You can also watch this live on YouTube. I want you to participate. All right, enough of all me. You've got the information. Uh, we're going to get back into some uh, exciting programs. I will leave you with this. We're doing this here in February, what, 12th, 13th, whatever it is. Uh, the Bluefin Tuna Action is still dynamite from the Carrick County North. It seems particularly out of the northern Outer Banks area with the Bluefin Tuna. Keep hearing more and more about Menhaden everywhere. And again, this time of year, the only thing that's prohibiting, or the major thing that's prohibiting folks from going out fishing is the weather. As soon as things start opening up, we'll get more fishing report out to you. I'm Bill Hitchcock. Until next time, see ya.